Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. Come on in. Well, hey everyone, it's Tom here, back in the shop for another project. So this is a fairly simple project, done it before. What you see here is a set of front hubs. A uh, customer said it's off of a uh, Mopar product. I believe uh, 60-ish, early 70s, something like that. Anyways, the bolt pattern is five by four and he wants them drilled out to five by four and a half and then weld up the holes. So, like I said, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. He found me on my website and contacted me. So that's good that I'm uh, finally getting, you know, a few hits and getting some work off of it. What we got here is, um, let me get you guys, hope you guys see that pretty good. So where the um, holes go for the studs, you know, originally from the factory, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit thicker and, you know, it's got a flat spot. So we'll probably have to, uh, you know, kiss the backside, obviously, with an end mill to get it flat, but we also have to countersink it for the top of the, um, the studs. This side obviously is easy. We'll just, um, you know, he wants me to do this as cheap as possible. So after we're done and we weld it up, I'm not going to put it in the lathe and you know, skim it. That just takes time. So I think I'll just do is just take an angle grinder with a flat disc, and we'll just make sure it's, you know, it's flat. That's all we need. So first off, I got to uh, get these studs out. Been uh, soaking them with some penetrating oil. Hopefully they'll come out. I kind of weld on one a little bit with a hammer and she doesn't really want to come out because usually you can you know a few good whacks and it comes out so what we'll do is we'll uh you know take it to the arbor press first if that's not enough tonnage then we'll take it over to the regular 20 ton press get these pressed out um i think i'm going to use the rotary table for a couple reasons one uh the math is easy you know we're doing five holes at 360 degrees so you know all i gotta do is move 72 degrees each time and that way I will stay accurate. Don't trust that uh, Chinesium DRO system 100% to do the whole bolt pattern. So that's why we're gonna do it this way. And I've got some stubbies that I ordered from or the previous hubs I drilled out, 17, 30 seconds. So that makes, uh, you know, the real estate between the table and the quill, you know, gets gets pretty short once you put the rotary table on, three jaw chuck, and then you got the hub. You know, you've only got this much room to work with. So, you know, I got some stubbies, so this will work out perfect. So we uh, we'll get over to the arbor press first, and we'll see if we can get these babies out. Well, of course, the uh, arbor press didn't work. These babies are in there. I don't know how long they've been in there, 60 years or so. So, let's see if they'll come out with this baby. Of course, she's gonna go wham when she finally releases. So, be ready for that. Ah, there she goes. They're in there. All right, that was easy figure sometimes they really make a loud noise but one out I'll knock the other four out alrighty let's get the small one out we're not getting the 15 inch rudder table out <laughs> uh. And it's only 90 pounds, so should be all right. Lift with the knees, right? Okay, okay. Oh, there we go. Of course, when I'm about 15 years older, I might not be hoisting this thing like that. <laughs> and. This is another advantage to keeping your vise set off to the side is hopefully I won't have to retake this off and retram it. We can just run it 
Got enough table space. Sweet. Let me get her uh, clamped down. Well, the table is zeroed, bolted down, got the hub down. Now we're just kind of kind of rough center it. What I've got is an end mill holder in there. And we'll just come down and get us pretty darn close and then we'll stick an indicator in it. That's the way I do it. Makes things easy. That way you're not wasting a whole bunch of time there. So yeah. It's pretty close, probably off maybe 20th hour or so. All right, let me get an indicator in there and we'll get her dialed in. Gonna have to go handheld here. Not a good spot to stick you, but got her dialed in. So on that uh, inner race, 28 and 28, 28. So we're there. Okay, table's locked. Got a long center drill in to be able to clear the top of that hub. Tell you, there's not gonna be much meat once I drill these out, but hopefully the uh, customer realizes that. Yeah, let me get the center drill in right. Wobbly. It's not a problem with this long one here. A little bit of the flute is catching on the uh, the jaw there of the uh, uh, Let me try a short one Okay, found the sweet spot Soft steel, man. All right, one down. Let me advance the uh, rotary table. I'm going to come back and uh, Run a deburring tool on it here after they're all drilled. Unlock the table. And let's go to 72. Backlash out, come on to her. Lock the table. Get you set up and we'll drill another hole. So oh, they're all drilled. No issues. Looks the way it's supposed to look. I'll go ahead and get this one out and I'll get the other one in and I'll just drill it off camera. I'll bring you guys back when we uh, flip her over and then, you know, mill a little bit of a uh, countersink. Well, I just checked in the holes on the uh, first hub that I drilled and believe it or not, the 17 32nd bit drilled exactly the nominal size it did not walk or did not uh you know drill the hole larger which 99 percent of the time drills usually do so i guess that's a good thing but uh so i'm checking this hub 
versus this hub and the stud holes are different sizes by quite a bit so I'd rather keep them too small than obviously too large I've called the customer I've gotten his uh his voicemail waiting for him to call me back figure out what he wants me to do since he did not send me a new stud so I know what size is going in it um I mean there's a big difference these the old ones that I pulled out I hope you guys can see that it's measuring well what five five three and a half five five one five five oh other one I think gone gone all the way down to about five forty eight and a half on the smallest size so trying to uh, figure out what to do because this is the one that uh, had the studs in it and it's the big one so this is a um, five five seven you know gauge pin I mean look how much slop is in that hole but uh, it fits into the other holes good so that's basically what I'm working with but I don't want to like I said drill it too large and this one's real small I won't even go in this is um, let's see so this is a 539 gauge pin and you can see she slips in good to all these so if I go up the next drill size, that would uh, be a 3564, so that would take it to 0.5469, or basically 547 thou, providing this drill doesn't walk and make it a larger hole. So I'd rather have it on the, the smaller side if that's the size of the studs he's going to go with. So <clears throat> kind of in limbo, just waiting for him to call me back, figure out what he wants to do, and we can go from there. But I figure I'd give you guys an update. Okay, the uh, customer called me back. We decided to go with the smaller holes. So that works. If uh, it doesn't work for him and he needs larger, then he's got a drill press and he can drill them out. And, you know, the good thing is the holes are located you know, where they need to be. So I've got the hub flipped over. Now we're just going to uh, countersink. So uh, accommodate the shoulder on those studs. And when I was drilling those holes, I was looking at those chips, and I'm about 99% sure this is actually cast iron, not cast steel. So I'm not going to be able to weld up the existing holes. He'll just have to uh, deal with it. So let's go ahead and get this baby done. I think I got you at a good spot. Now the depth on these are all over the place, from like 30 thou to like 60. So I think I'm just going to go around 40 to 45 thou. I think I mentioned it's a 13 16 end mill. It's going to take it easy because I'm gripping on a taper on that hub on the other side, so I don't want to tip it over once I get full contact. If you guys can see that or not which is just about there. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero my coil and we'll go from there. Looking pretty good. Without depth, let me see what she looks like. Pretty tall on that shoulder in the back. Yeah, that's good. We'll run with that one. All right, so then just loosen up the old rotary table. And now I gotta go 72 degrees. Turn my flashlight on so I can see that wheel. Gray wheel down there.
Come back, take the backlash out. All right, 72. Okay, I'm gonna rinse and repeat. Well, the hubs are done, as you can see. Um, like I said, this is cast iron, so I cannot weld up the old holes for the customer. I let them know that. And 3 16th end mill, countersunk was fine. Worked out the problem, so here they are. Ready to go back to them. Once he uh, drops a payment in the mail, then I'll uh, put them in a flat rate box and they'll head out to them. And you can always use your template to make sure you didn't bozo anything. So I can put a bolt in here. Let's see if I can do this so you guys can see it. And a bolt in there. And then you run your template. So that's your master hole and you come and line it up. And there we go, we're at uh, four and a half. So, and I'll put it in the old hole to show you how it was uh, four. And then that would be a five by four bolt pattern. So pretty easy project, hope you guys enjoyed it. Little rotary table action. So, one knocked out, on to the next project. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit that subscribe button if this is the kind of stuff you like. And until then, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.